I like, click, and subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This joint is called On My Skin. Arrested in Rome for a drug dealing offense, Stefano Cucci endures a harrowing week in custody that changes his family forever, based on true events. So this is an Italian movie. It's based on a real life story. It came out 2018. It's about an hour and 40 minutes long. So let's just jump right into it. Spoiler alert. So we got this guy here named Stefano, getting his exercise on, jogging and all that. He goes to churches and rehab centers. He also does work in construction, which we find out later on is his dad's company. He stays in the gym and apparently we find out he's a small time boxer too, or that's what he tells us. So he goes back to his crib, sharpens up a blade, and proceeds to cut up chocolate because that's kind of one of his favorite things, I guess. Later on, he's walking down the street and meets up with his sister's boyfriend, Lou. They're supposed to be having dinner with Lou's parents or something like that. He catches up with his sister, tells her to have a good time, and he heads upstairs to have dinner with his parents. Dad keeps asking about work, making sure that everything's good, and Stefano makes sure he got some uh, certain signed papers to have in his office or whatever. Well, anyway, after dinner, he goes to the back to talk to his mom. Now, mom misses him even though she's the one that got him a new place, but she really wants him back there for whatever reason. After he leaves, he gets back in the car, chilling with his friend, just smoking a cigarette and just talking it out. All of a sudden, the boys roll up on him, start some bullshit, so they end up searching him, but they do end up finding 20 grams of hash and 2 grams of heroin or something like that. So the cops end up taking him to jail. So once they get there, the officer asks him to do an inspection right there in the office. Usually they do this stuff near the cells, not the freaking office. I mean, I guess Italy's different. So we find out he's had a prior history with drugs, but he's been says he's been clean for the last five years. The only reason he takes anything is because of his epilepsy. So he tells them they've been moving around, he's been moving around from place to place, and they're gonna search his parents' house for drugs and anything like that. And he's like, nah, man, they can't search there like they're sleeping. But it's like, why would you search his parents' house anyway? I mean, like. So they go to search his parents' house. They don't find shit. But really, I think he said that just to give them something because they kept asking him. I guess they just don't know about his spot or something. So after that, they take him back to the station. Or they say they go into the photo room to take pictures. And they proceed to beat the shit out of him in that room. Now he's really riding down to the station, face all fucked up. The chief is asking him what happened to his face. They want him to sign on the line for other bogus charges. He's like, I'm not signing that shit. So they send him to the Torres Sapienza station. Torres Sapienza? Uh, something like that. And cops looking up like, damn, what the fuck happened to you? And obviously he don't trust none of them, so it's like, why even bother telling them, you know what I'm saying? So they take him to jail, his epilepsy's acting up. He calls for the guard and he's asking for his medicine. But they don't want to give him medicine, they want to take him to the hospital. But he doesn't want to get his insides checked out, and I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe to help out his case if they didn't, but I'm not exactly sure. Then physicians come in and want to take him to the hospital, but he says, nah, I'm good. And he lays back down and goes back to sleep. Meanwhile, the parents are trying to figure out what happened. They was like, there's no way he was strung out again. He was like, they never even, he never even missed a day of work. Like, he's been doing his routines. They're convinced something else is going on, but they're not sure what. Sister come home and she explains to mom, like, he'll probably only be there a day. It's not going to be that serious. Then she talks about his addiction and is like, all right, we hope he's not going back to that. You know what I'm saying? And she was saying the same thing. Like, she had rather seen her in the house with mom instead of him having his own place. Back in the jail, the guards are getting ready for Stefano to go to court. These are new guards. They're looking like, man, what the fuck happened to you? But once again, he's not going to waste his time telling them because he's thinking to himself, there ain't nothing they're going to do about it. So they get him to the court, and as they hand him a cig, he sees the cop that was beating the shit out of him. Still not really saying nothing, though. And they basically put him in another cell to wait for court. He's calling for the guard to get his medicine, but he's like, that's some, uh, one of the inmates are like, yeah, don't call them guards, call them officers. He's like... Really? Like, this place is a shit old and that's what they're worried about? But of course he's not getting his medicine. And now they're going straight to court. His dad meets him there and he's like, oh, what happened to your face? And he doesn't really tell him. So he told the police a while ago to call his lawyer, but obviously the police didn't even do that. They just got him a public defender. So they basically just said, fuck him. So they already violated his right to have his own lawyer there. It's like... So the judge is running on the information to him, and she's basically running on the charges that's presented to him. He says he'll take the drug charge, but he's not going to take the attempt to distribute charge. Because he wasn't selling them, he was just smoking them. I don't know why his bitch ass looking like he got sympathy and shit. You was the one with the dudes when they laid a smackdown on somebody who has epilepsy on top of that, you fucker. So basically they established another hearing, but he's not going to get it to like a no whole nother month. So throughout that time, he's got to remain in custody. But the way they treating him, I don't see him lasting another month for real, for real. It's like he sees the cops that beat him up, he has epilepsy, they didn't let him get his own lawyer, they had a public defender, like, yeah, it's bu bullshit. So obviously they can't keep him in holding forever, they gotta send him to a real jail. And finally he gets to a doctor to get some fucking medicine, and the doctor asks him what happened to the face, he's like, man, I just fell down some stairs. So obviously, he doesn't trust anybody to tell them anything either. And why would he at this point, you know what I'm saying? Then they put him in a paddy wagon, getting ready for real jail, and his people are tripping out, it's like, they took him in for that long for a little bit of weed, like, what the fuck? He gets to the jail and he actually tells this officer what really happened. But at this point, he didn't care if he believed it or not as he showed him the bruises on his back and around his ribs and of course his face he saw. I think they say he had two broken ribs at that point. 
At this point, he's just like, fuck this shit, just take me to myself. But they take him to a doctor and he shows the bruises. It's like, ugh. He tells the doctor the same information. The doctor's looking at him like, don't you trust anybody? And he's like, man, you wouldn't trust nobody neither. Back in his cell, they get him to go see a doctor for real. And he's basically there to get some x-rays done. Cat scans on his back and all that. Meanwhile, the mom's thinking to herself, we thought one day at jail might be able to do it. But damn, they like, he's got to stay in there for a month. But they're really more worried about his condition more than anything. While in jail, he's talking to another inmate about his whole situation. Then he's going to a hospital to get checked out again. As you can tell, he's getting worse. Yeah, so it's gotten to the point where he can't even urinate by himself. So they got to stick up the catheter in him. I don't know what exactly it is, but trust me, it's some painful shit. After that, another set of officers here come to take him to another hospital. And at this point, the parents are getting worried because they haven't been receiving calls or anything trying to figure out what's going on. They're completely frustrated with what little knowledge that they're getting from the cops about anything. When he gets there, this cop gives them all these rules about you can't smoke between hours of 1 or 9 or some goofy ass shit like that. Like can't be walking around a jail cell. He's talking about certain ways of pressing emergency button and all this other shit. I'm like, dude, he's not a regular patient, yo. Like, what harm is he going to do to anybody? He's legit being brought in on a fucking stretcher. I mean, some people you can't just look at as common criminals. I mean, like, he's been to, like, four different hospitals. He's been brought in on a fucking stretcher. I'm like, God damn, he's got epilepsy. It's like, come on. The parents finally figure out which jail he's in. They try to get visitation rights or something. Like, they keep giving him all these runaround rules. Like, you can only see him Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to bring clothes and all this other bullshit. The cop comes out harassing him, talking about you can't be smoking at this hour. He's like, what the fuck are you going to do to me at this point? You know what I'm saying? He hasn't really been eating like that. And then you got the nurse coming in and talking about, you know, you shouldn't be, you can't be smoking here. You know, you might burn down the whole jail cell. Really? He'd be that stupid to burn down his fucking cell? Like, what is the jail made out of kerosene or something? Like, get the fuck out of here. It's stupid shit. Then we got this doctor checking up on him again, just treating him like he's your average, irregular criminal. It's like at this point, he can barely get out the bed, you know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, his parents been trying to get to him, but he can't. And they're trying to consider the fact that there's more going on here. They're thinking to themselves, maybe the police beat the shit out of him. Like, why else would he have came on, seen him with all these bruises on his face before he went to court? Yeah, that's a genuine possibility. So they go to visit the jail on Monday, as they told him, but then they say, unfortunately, without the judge's authorization, we can't do nothing and all this other crap. So basically, the police are giving the parents the runaround. And of course, while all that's going on, Stefano's condition is getting even worse. Doing more CAT scans. He talks to another cell named ma ma Marco about all the nightmares he's been having. Next day, nurses check on him again. Parents go back frustrated as they should be because they keep giving them the run around these bogus ass rules. So there's one scene he tells one of the nurses what really happened. A cop beat him up and all this other stuff. She wants him to write a written statement, but Stefano's like, why bother? Like, he's like, y'all been evaluating me this whole time and you couldn't figure that out? Like, y'all part of the act too. Back at home, his sister's talking to Stefano's lawyer about why he wasn't able to show up in court and he just didn't. And then he gets all this information about the police not being able to do this, do that. They basically just fucking with him. Later on, Stefano gets a guidance counselor and he gives a message to tell to call her brother. I mean, her sister's uh, boyfriend. And he asks to see him. He doesn't get the reason why, but he says it's very important. Back at home, his sister's baffled about why he would request her a boyfriend. And he doesn't know either. I guess he knew that he wouldn't be yelling at him or something. I don't know. Back in his cell, he's thinking about all his past regrets. But the biggest regret he ever had is that he said his parents didn't deserve a son like him. I'm like, damn, dude, you weren't that bad of a human being, you know what I'm saying? Next day, the doctors end up checking on him. We couldn't find out he passed away that same night. Next day, police officers come to the parents' door. And I swear, you won't believe this shit. They ask all these questions about him before they tell him that he passed away. And they won't even let us see him his autopsy, but they want him to sign autopsy papers. I'm like, are you fucking serious? But obviously, his sis not having that bullshit. Sis like, y'all better get the fuck out here with that shit. Let me see my brother. And then they go in and see him one last time. Stefano Cucci was the 148th person to die in prison in t back in 2009. The total number of deaths that year were 172. Doctor and forensic experts have not yet found a scientific explanation they could all agree on for Stefano Cucci's death. In their son's apartment, Stefano Cucci's parents found over a kilo of hashish and 130 grams of cocaine. So that's why he never kept going back to his house. In the first trial of Stefano's death, all the defendants were acquitted. After a further investigation by the public prosecutor, on July 10th, 2017, the judge for preliminary hearing indicted the three officers for involuntary manslaughter and two others for slander and forgery of public documents. So they did get them niggas at the cost of his life, though. In 2017, they set up a non-profit organization to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen. That's the real Stefano Cucci and his real sister. So this really did take place in Italy. On my skin on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what it is. Sleep DZ, all DZ, Mr. Sissy, yeah. Big, you got their slogan.